In today's video, I'm going to be giving you a tutorial on how to disassemble a Tesla battery pack, cut it up, reassemble it, and install it in your electric conversion project. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to be using a Tesla Model 3 battery pack and I'm going to be installing it in my 1985 Volkswagen Doka Transporter. Now, for all of you just joining in, a Doka Transporter is basically a Volkswagen Vanagon, but the truck version. We never got them in the US because of the chicken tax, but I luckily got my hands on one. So your first step in this process is always going to be finding a battery pack. Personally, I recommend using Facebook Marketplace. Five years ago, a Tesla battery pack would have set you back $10,000 for just the battery modules alone. Now, you could get a complete pack for less than $5,000 easily. The battery pack I was looking for was a Tesla Model 3 standard range battery pack. Now, of course, this standard range is marketing. It really means it's the smallest battery pack. The standard range battery pack has 57 kilowatts of energy. I'm hoping to get 2.5 miles per kilowatt on my electric conversion project. So that should get me, what, 120, 130 miles. Not amazing, but not horrible either. Pretty usable and pretty practical. Okay, your first step in one of these battery packs is you're going to disassemble the penthouse. Now the penthouse is what Tesla calls the top part of the battery pack that houses all the important high voltage connectors and electronics. You have your contactors in there, DC to DC converter, your charge setup, your PCS, everything expensive and important is in there. And it's also super dangerous. So the first step in this process, put on some high voltage gloves. There's 350 volts in this battery pack, so it'll kill you really fast. I'm in the shop alone. I am recording this. If I die by touching things I shouldn't touch, delete this video for life insurance reasons. But actually what we're gonna do, this is very safe. This is an access port that you can open up and check to see if the contactors inside the battery pack are still open. So let's Expect to... Okay, success. No voltage between there, any of the plugs in there, nothing. So either this battery is dead or hopefully the contactors are just not engaged, which is how it should be. So now we're gonna disconnect everything and just peek inside the battery. Okay, we have no voltage on any of this right now, so I can just go through and I'm gonna loosen everything up and then I'll throw on the gloves when I take this off. All right, here's a detailed look into the penthouse. Okay, once you open up the penthouse, your first step is to test your pyro fuse. See right there, you're looking at the pyro fuse. This is the safety precaution that anytime a Tesla battery pack is in a collision, blows and it disconnects the high voltage. My pyro fuse was actually in good working condition. So I'm not exactly sure what the story of this battery pack was, but it works. You could test the continuity across it, set your multimeter to continuity. If you get a beep, it's good. First thing you're going to do is disconnect that. There is the power fuse was right here. Yeah, that's one post, that's one post. So from there to there, we still have 180 volts. Yeah. From there to there, we still have 180 volts, but we don't have 360 volts anymore. Let's make sure that you are using high voltage gloves. Take off any jewelry or any metal rings that you have. Open up the penthouse, disconnect everything in there. Make sure you're wearing high voltage gloves watch a more in-depth tutorial. There's a really great one that I'll link right here. Okay, one little thing to get the penthouse totally removed is you need to, you can see this right here, cut this laser weld. It has been laser welded from the factory. And then it is also epoxied on. So you have to go through, cut this laser weld, chisel it out, and then use a scraper to pull this off, so. Okay, about an hour later, we've gone around and we have Hit this with an angle grinder, then came through with a putty knife slash screwdriver combo to get this all up. Okay. Take that off. This has all been hit and separated. There's a very thin lip right here. If you go back on this side, you can see there's epoxy right here. So it looks like they glue it on and then laser weld it. So now I'm gonna take my putty knife and I'm going to come all the way through and separate out that layer. Okay, here it is. That is 
<laughs> that's a workout, I'll say what. Anyway, so you can see some places where I did it really well, and you can see some places where I kind of messed up and went into the other metal. That's okay, this whole tray uh, is removable. So let's clean this up and then finish disassembling everything. Okay, once you remove the rear motor high voltage connection and the HVAC connections, the AC and heater connection from underneath here, where are you? Right here. You can actually remove this final fuse panel. Um, if you have a front motor, which would come out, I think the connection's down here um, somewhere, you would have to remove that too. Then at that point, this whole fuse will come off or um, bus bar, this whole bus bar will come off. Then you're going to open up the top shell of the battery pack. You have to unbolt all of that. You're going to be using a E7 Torx bit that goes all the way around the perimeter. And then you're going to use a putty knife and you're gonna scrape your way around the perimeter because there is some epoxy sealant that keeps all the water and air out of this pack. Okay, final couple steps. There are these bolts that are also threaded. You need a 12 millimeter Allen key. Super hard to get. You have to buy it in like a combo pack from Home Depot. Or I guess you, if you really wanted to, you could buy it online. But all day. Once you do that, take the bolts off the top and you can remove the top part of the battery and the penthouse. Okay, here we go. Moment of truth. Can't put it off any longer. It's time to see if there's the short batteries inside. Fingers crossed. Yes. Oh. Yes. Okay. Did you see that? Could you see that? I think so. Woo. There we go. Those are the shorter modules. <laughs> so as you can see, they stop right here. Whereas with the standard range plus and the extended range, these are filled all the way. So these are actually relatively shorter than I was even expecting. So this should be easy to fit. Can you imagine this whole thing right here powers your standard Tesla. That's pretty crazy. We're hoping to put those right in here. We're staring at the truck right now. There's the truck bed, which I have removed. Those are all battery components. I think we can fit the modules right in here in this little treasure chest area. Down here. So let's see. Let's take, I'm gonna tear this apart a little bit more and then I'll check back in. Once you have the top shell of the battery pack up, you can remove the batteries themselves. It's on these. Here's my shoot across this way. Okay. So this is an 8-5 message. A lot of torque Interesting. They're fairly high quality bus bars on top of each other. Yeah. yeah. And then here, it's sending mode attempt on this mess here. You're not here. Yeah. There you go. This is very satisfying when it pops out. There it is. There we go. Now, the batteries are suspended on these little shelves. Now, these shelves are using these bolts. These are E12 Torx bits, six lobe. When you loosen these, it'll lower down the modules. The modules do have about a three mil air gap. It's a pretty cool design in the battery pack, which I'm able to maintain. You're going to be removing the modules. This is kind of the scary part. Be careful, definitely have two people. I found a really good way to do this is take some straps and you can kind of weave them underneath the battery modules and you can lift them up and you can kind of shuffle out of place with the batteries. Now be careful when you place them down, find a clean surface to place them down on because the bottom of these batteries are actually exposed. Something I wanted to show you because this is something I was pretty stressed about. When you are actually loading and unloading the modules, this is the bottom cell, the bottom of the module. Okay, now this stuff down here, it's like hard to the touch. And if you look really closely, you can actually see all the fuses it's pretty cool stuff. However, if this white stuff gets wet, it's like a desiccant. It becomes kind of sandy and gritty and it expands. It's supposed to absorb moisture in case water ever gets in the battery case. It's actually a pretty cool design. 
Um, so a couple things to note, always plug your battery modules when you're taking them out. <laughs> always have a bunch of rags on hand. And if it gets a little wet, it's not the end of the world. The desiccant will soak up a lot of that. Um, but you're totally okay to actually kind of grab it a little bit on the bottom, be careful. Um, I did have one small short, so I probably lost one series. So you're definitely gonna put those in a very clean area. I used a yoga mat and I actually use slats of wood to keep them elevated off the ground so they weren't completely touching. When you're disassembling the battery pack, a couple things to keep in mind. Remove the two outer battery modules first, then you will remove the inner beam of the battery pack. The inner beam is removable. So, nice. And then you can remove the two inner modules. Okay, so I think that's about it. Let me know what you think. If you have any questions and you wanna do this yourself, you totally can. It's very easy. Well, it's not easy. It's doable. If you do your research, it's definitely doable. If you have any questions, comment it below. I'm pretty good at getting back to the comments. I'd love to help you guys on this as well too. It's a cool project. We're in a new era of engine swaps. You can pick up this stuff for pretty cheap and there's tons of info online, which five years ago, it wasn't cheap and the info wasn't online. The Tesla service manuals are all available now for free. That's thanks to the Right to Repair Act. So go us. Everything is out there that you could possibly need. So look into it ask questions, message people that have done it before, like me or other people on YouTube. And we're all pretty friendly and like to kind of spread the knowledge. So give it a shot. <laughs> I'm not the smartest guy in the world, but I figured it out and I think you probably could too. So chain, chain, center strap to keep it centered. Both sides, car lift, single lift. Let's see what happens. This could be done. Probably is.